systems. I tell people you can't have a faith-based diagnostic system. It has to be fact-based. Right. So I like to work from facts, and without question, the voltage drop is the one test that's going to give you the most factual data as quickly as possible. Now, uh, as we know, a circuit is basically a circle, if you think about it that way. That's correct. And then show us that in perspective, and that way we'll have a better understanding of uh, how voltage drop and load testing works. Okay, I'll do it. There are only three faults that can occur in a wire. So my methodology for testing is based upon this, and it's also based upon the fact that there's only one load per circuit. And uh, because there's only one load per circuit, the load pro is actually a substitute load. Okay, so when, when you unplug the light, the motor, the coil, the buzzer, the beeper, the blinker, the horn, the solenoid, whatever you unplug on whatever you're working on, you only have to remember 12 and 0 or 24 and 0. And when you put this tool in the circuit, this tool becomes the load, uh, hence the name. So if we're looking for these three faults, and those are the three faults that we have to remember exist, then we have to ask ourselves, how do we identify them? Okay? So the first thing we're going to do, though, is not ask the question, what's wrong? We're going to ask, what's right? That's the most important question to ask electrically. Not what's wrong, but what's working right. So if we take a circle, hence the name circuit, and we put a battery here, for example, and we put a fuse here, for example, and we put a switch here, close the switch, and we put a motor here, then this is a circuit. Power, ground, load and switch and that's what all all circuits have in common multiple switches possibly but they all have the other three in common so the problem is if this motor has malfunctioned for some reason and we don't know why then what we have to do is we have to make a quick decision and what I tell people is you simply go to the load and read voltage because that's the one thing we know for certain is supposed to be there we're supposed to have 12 or 24 volts at the thing otherwise it can't work so when I read a schematic, the question is, how do I get 12 or 24 volts to the thing? That's why you read schematics. So if I take a meter and I place the meter in the circuit on volts, and I put the red lead into the connector, which is what everybody expects, but I also put, I also put the black lead into the connector, and that's because I want to be testing the entire loop. I don't want to test half of the circuit and see voltage and go, well, maybe I have a bad ground. Maybe is a bad word in diagnostics. So if I am reading voltage at this point in this circuit, then with voltage applied, the switch closed, the fuse good, I should read, and to use easy numbers, I should read about 12 point three volts, for example. So let's say we're supposed to read 12.3 volts. Okay, so we read 12.3 volts. The question is, what does that mean? Well, what does it mean? Well, it means that we've got that much voltage pressure there. Correct, but what it also means is we don't have this, and we don't have this. Because we couldn't read full system voltage at that point if the circuit were open or shorted to ground. Because in open, of course, no voltage. Short to ground, we plop, probably blow the fuse, no voltage. So rather than seeing 12 volts and going, I'm not really sure what I have, you look at 12 volts and go, well, I'm doggone sure what I don't have. I don't have an open or short. So let's just reiterate real quick. Okay. If we don't have an open, we don't have a short, then the pressure, the voltage push generated by the battery should show up at this place. Correct. Absolutely. And the thing to remember is that every time you've ever read, do you see system voltage in uh, a manual, what they're really asking you is to do a continuity test. Because by itself, system voltage does not mean the circuit is good. System voltage simply means that certain faults are not present. That's a completely different way to think because that's not how the manufacturer teaches us. That's correct. Okay. So, from there, we're stuck because now we only have two of three faults ruled out and the meter, as you've seen in your previous example, doesn't show us a load because even through high resistance in the previous example, it actually read system voltage, which is what's confusing. So, what we do is we load the circuit. And by loading the circuit, we're turning the circuit on. And when we turn the circuit on, by pushing the load pro button, 
what we're doing is we're completing the circuit and now the tool is acting as if it's the motor and if we have corrosion the voltage drops the voltage doesn't drop we don't have corrosion and guess what if we don't have corrosion we don't have a wire fault that is correct that's I wish it were more complicated, but it's not. <laughs> That's the thing. I wish it were more complicated, too, but it really is not. And so you can see when we actually used this procedure on the vehicle, the load protester actually loaded the circuit down. We could see the voltage drop, and we know now that somewhere in that circle or circuit, we had high resistance. Correct. And that's, that's the single most important thing to remember is somewhere. And that's why this black lead in this connection is so critical. We don't want to go to ground initially, which is the test light mode of clip it to ground, check for voltage, maybe we have a bad ground. I don't like the word maybe, okay? I like the word definitely. So we definitely don't have an open or short if we see system voltage. And we definitely don't have high resistance if we load the circuit and still see system voltage. Okay? So the last thing you have to figure out is what side of the circuit is it's in? Well, it's very simple. We take the black lead and we move it to a good machine ground. So the way this works is that if we are in, um, if we're testing only the positive half, if we repeat the test because there was a drop and the problem comes back, then the problem is in the positive side because we're only testing the positive half. If we repeat the test with the ground out of the test and the problem goes away, the problem was in the ground. So by process of elimination, we've tested the voltage once, determined the fault, and with a second test, determined where it is. Now we know that because the voltage came back, the problem was in the ground side. That's correct. Because we've eliminated the ground side. Somewhere between here and here, we have high resistance and now we know the circuit to check. Correct. Now the single most important part of this test is that it's a go no go gauge for wiring which is not what you're used to. You're used to worrying about the component. The component fails 20 percent of the time the wire fails 80 percent. So if you have an 80 percent odds of winning I would never leave Vegas. But I don't have that odds of winning <laughs> in Vegas but I do have those odds here because every manufacturer will tell you that 80% of electrical faults occur in wires and the Load Pro is specifically designed to rule wires in or out as the fault instantly. Just that simple.